You might not own any CDs anymore, but if you do, you might notice on the back of some of the earlier ones are these strange three-letter markings, AAD, ADD, or DDD. So what do these strange markings mean? Well, the compact disc, or CD, was released in 1982, and it was meant to be the ultimate in sound quality, and a large part of this was its digital nature. Digital really meant the future in the early 1980s. Computers were digital and analog was really seen as sort of old school and the, the old 1970s way of doing things. So to sell these pure digital compact disc recordings, the Society of Professional Audio Recording Services, or SPARS, created a three-letter code in 1984. It was to give an idea about how digital or not digital a recording was, because many compact discs at the time were just old analog recordings that had appeared on LP or cassette in the 1970s or early 1980s. So this was really a way to try and push the new pure digital recordings. The first letter of the three letters was how the performance was recorded, A for analog and D for digital. The second letter was the type of equipment that mixed the recordings, either an analog mixing deck or a digital mixing deck. And the third letter was how the recording was mastered. Of course, this was always D or digital for compact disc. But there was a reason why they decided to put a letter for analog or digital for mastering, and that's because the SPARS code was intended not just for compact discs, but for any recording medium. So LPs and cassettes could also have this uh, three letter code, and of course, the third letter would then be A for analog. In practice, of course, that almost never happened. Who wants to advertise that you're analog versus digital in the 1980s? Digital meant quality, so why would you? want to put that, but more recently some vinyl and cassettes have actually used this three letter code maybe for its retro look. One of them is Personal Life by The Thermals, which was on vinyl in 2010. So did this three letter digital marketing move work? Well, actually it did. People looked for the DDD sign as a sign of quality because digital, of course, meant quality in the early 1980s. If something was digitally recorded, mixed and mastered, then it was digital from start to end. It wouldn't have any hisses, pops from the analog medium. This was recording perfection. An example of this uh, was that in 1977, Beethoven's Symphony No. 3 was recorded by Herbert von Karajan and the Berlin Philharmonica, and it was widely praised. The recording won awards and sounded really good, but it was an AAD recording. It was analog uh, recorded, analog mixed, and of course it was digital when it came out on compact disc. But Berlin Philharmonica's DDD 1984 digital version sold better, even though the recording wasn't held in as high esteem as this 1977 version. But as the 1980s turned to the 1990s, the SPARS organization tried to kill off their own three-letter coding system. They felt it didn't really reflect what was happening in mastering. For example, what if a digital recording was transferred to analog and then back to digital? Was it still digital? What if a CD had 30 tracks and 29 of the tracks were digital, but the 30th track was digital but had some analog vocals mixed onto it? Is it digital? Is it analog? So the SPARS organization withdrew their support for their own system in 1991, but recording labels kept on using it. Presumably, they hoped it could still help them sell CDs because digital was still a thing. So the SPARS organization ended up re-endorsing it in 1995, even though it was all getting very silly. The SPA system is really just a reminder of this weird time in the 1980s when digital meant quality. But as we now know, analog master tapes from the 1970s can sound absolutely excellent. We don't complain about the quality of The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, for example. But customers at that time only heard those albums on cassette or LP. So for them, analog just meant pops and hisses because that's how they were hearing it. The sheen of 
digital more often in the 1990s as audiophiles wanted the warm sound of analog, whatever that meant with its pops and hisses and crackles and things like that, and although they tried to reduce them, but for some reason they felt analog was a warm sound. Digital was seen as a precise robotic sound lacking passion. Maybe this is why Super Audio CD failed in the 1990s. It had a higher bit rate, theoretically it was more accurate and had six channels versus two channels, you could do all kinds of extra things with it, but no one was interested. Audiophiles weren't looking for something more precise, they were looking for a warmer sound. The CDs were stuck behind a drawer, which also maybe added to its lack of passion, but LPs had big cover art, you could interact with the medium, you could put the stylus on the record, music was an event rather than something you put on while you're doing something else. Today, the coveted three-letter DDD symbol isn't seen much on compact discs, even though most music is recorded digitally. But then again, we don't see much of CDs anyway because they're disappearing. Streaming is king, which ironically has even less quality than the compact disc that launched 40 years ago. But people don't really seem to mind. There's no pops, crackles, or hisses from streaming, so really that's all people want. They just want convenience out of music, and whether it's analog or digital or anything doesn't really matter to them. The three letters on your old compact discs are a reminder of a time when digital was new, exciting, and coveted. Record companies didn't always get it right. For example, the Aerosmith CD release of Get A Grip was labelled AAA, even though of course it had to be mastered as digital or it wouldn't really have worked. But uh, anyway, we can't always get things right, can we? Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.